최고 Alright guys, welcome back. We're up the creek today, we're just having a little bit of a play. The wind's blowing its ass off and uh, probably about 20 knots and it's cold, it's really cold. So water temp's about 18 degrees, which isn't really ideal, but uh, while the tide's still quite low, I'm just gonna have a little bit of a crack at some barra and then uh, as the tide comes up, we'll move off the rock bars and uh, get up onto the flats and have a crack there. And then once the tide's full, I'm gonna head up the creek and try and find some threadies. So that's the combo I'm running today. It's my little uh, 200 HG Conquest Dobbin 704 Champion XP, which is a uh, 10 to 20 pound rod. It's got a nice soft tip, so it's nice and forgiving. And uh, you know, if I'm fishing this rod tip at a sort of 90 degree angle to my lure, it does fold away nice and easy. and just gives that little bit of um, little bit of play for the fish to sort of suck the lure into their mouth. So really nice little barrel rod for slow rolling and that. And it's quite fast, so it recovers really quickly. So when you're twitching, you know, you're not fishing a sloppy rod. It's nice and crisp and responsive. So uh, yeah, that's the 704. And uh, I'm running, that's uh, PE2, that's 40 pound Sunline Castaway and a 90 pound nylon shock leader, uh, once again from Sunline. That's the lure there I'm running. It's just a little uh, Benny Durkin timber lure. It's, um, I'll pull him off so you can have a look. It's pretty, pretty cool little lure. I got a bunch from Benny a little while ago. He no longer makes lures, so I'll be a little bit devastated, to be honest, if I lose it, but uh, that's it there. Uh, little um, shallow diver, I'm only fishing about a metre. The idea behind that is that, you know, the the water's so cold, we're looking at about 18 degrees at the moment, so um, I'm pretty much gonna just fish the real shallow stuff today, sort of anything under one and a half metres. My idea behind it is that, you know, the mud's nice and warm, the rocks are nice and warm, they've been in the sun heating up all morning. It's sort of about lunchtime now, so had plenty of time for everything to warm up, and then as the tide comes in, I'm thinking, well, I know that the barra do this, uh, they'll come up and sit up in the really shallow stuff, like, you know, anything under a sort of meter, meter, meter and a half at the, at the deepest. So yeah, I went that little one there, Mo mostly just the color. There's a whole bunch of uh, garfish and stuff like that that are um, out the front of this creek here. So a little bit of green on the top, silver, puts out a bit of flash. I got that rigged up with um, size four BKK fangs and size four rings. So uh, just the fangs are a little bit light gauge. They're still a three extra strong. I do fish these a lot for barra, especially lures that uh, I like to sort of put a bit more action into. The lighter hooks don't sort of dull the action too much, so you get a better swimming action out of them. But uh, gonna give him a bit of a run. He's had a few fish before, but um, like I said, I'm gonna be quietly devastated if I lose him. So basically, we got a few rocks here. I'm fishing these sort of rocks, like little rocky sort of zones like this here in front of me. We've got a, bit, a few snags in that. I've marked a few snags as the tide was lower. So I'm gonna go out to them and I'm just gonna have a little bit of a scan and see if there's any anything sitting on them. And I'm just looking for like back eddies in the shallower stuff. So yeah, I'm just gonna drive up. I'm not really gonna fish unless I find fish. So fingers crossed we can find them. But uh, yeah, as the tide comes up, you can see all the flats there. Like that's all gonna hold fish as the tide moves forward. So fingers crossed we can get a few. Stay tuned. So this is what we're looking at, basically. You can see there's a bunch of snake drains there on the left that are coming through and then out into the main channel on your right. And uh, there's a few rocks in amongst it, just here and there. And there is a few sticks and that coming up. But um, yeah, basically, 
like I said, I'm going to fish nice and shallow. That's 0.8 of a metre coming down there a little bit as we go through that drain. But uh, we're looking for little gravel patches and uh, just like little tuckaways like that the fish can sit out of the current but still stay warm. So, yeah, got a bit of a theory that they're sitting in, you know, just conserving energy while it's this cold and um, tucked in into like little back eddies and little uh, upwellings and things like that as um, certain pieces of structure break the current. So I feel like that's probably going to be my best shot. There's a really nice snake drain there, you can see. But a uh, couple of little fish on the left hand side, just down from it. Only really small, probably some small grunner in that. A few more rocks out to the right, and we're probably going to come over a solid rock bar here somewhere. But uh, it's really difficult to sort of read the fish when they're tucked into the rocks like that, so I'm pretty much going to be looking for the ones that are just sitting out off the actual rocks. So if I get one good shadow, I think that's, you know, potentially gonna be a bunch of fish stacked in and one giving away all his mates. So I'm just looking for, a, you know, just a bit of a, any sort of idea that there's gonna be fish here and then that's gonna be what we're looking at. So as you can see, really shallow both sides only a meter now so i'll probably fish here until get up to about a meter meter and a meter and a half i'd say 1.2 to 1.5 and then i'll start moving up on the flats and uh, have a go there there's plenty of rocks here now and you can see that's the main channel on the right them dark shadows that are coming in and it should get a little bit deeper now very hard to tell but it looks like there's a possible fish sort of six meters out on the left it's sort of you know, about a quarter of the way down the screen there hard to tell if it actually is a fish but uh i think that this should be a pretty good spot to start 1.4 here yeah this is me i'm going to spot lock now and uh see how we go prime time right now the tide's really starting to move so you're gonna get a lot of fish moving I should be able to intercept one if I just generally like when I'm fishing for barra and it's strong current like this I'll just consistently sort of cast at the same sort of area while there's this much current because what that does is just gives you the best chance of intercepting a fish so if I'm casting here and then I next cast over there and next cast there like you know I've potentially missed a whole lot of fish that are moving through whereas if I'm just casting at the same spot I'm going to intercept a lot more fish so just another little tip, something that I do most of the time when I'm barra fishing in stronger current. And while I'm here, another thing I'm looking at, which I find pretty important, it all, always pays to keep a close eye on, is just looking for little upwellings in the water, like displacement where there shouldn't be or where there hasn't been previously, because what you get is you get a fish that's sort of sitting in, in the current, just tucked in. And as he moves, he'll kick up a lot of water and get it moving. Cause we're, like I said, we're only fishing one, 1.2 meters here. So any movement on the surface, it has potential to be a fish just moving. So I'm always watching the water surface just to sort of see what I can see. And uh, if I do see an irregular sort of boil, I'll definitely put a cast on it. Like it's just, just like anything with lure fishing, you just always got to be alert and watching what you're doing because all these little opportunities present themselves and if you're not switched on to it you're not going to be able to capitalize so it's um it's just one of them things you sort of oh too busy talking to you guys <laughs> just yeah always pay attention and try and know what's happening around just so you can put more fish on the deck really
Yes. <laughs> oh. Not a bad one. Not bad at all. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah. Now for the fun part. Oh shit. That was a really random bite too. <laughs> Not bad. Come on, mate. I'll have you back before you know. Been sitting on barrel all morning. I come out here. Got him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Bloody stoked. He's a good fish. Really nice fish. <laughs> Probably push 80, high 80s, mid, mid to high 80s. But that's what we're chasing. Solid winter barra. Really nice, healthy fish. I'm going to get him up. Give me two seconds, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. There he is, nice big chrome one. That's a Benny Durkin, about 100 mil timber lure. But yeah, nice healthy fish, 18 degree water. Who says you can't get him to eat? I'm gonna get him back and hopefully get a bigger one. Come on, buddy. Very sluggish fight. I'll take him though. All right. Come on, bite down. There we go. See you, mate. Got him. <laughs> Solo missions. Can't complain with that. I've got a feeling it's just going to start now, so I'm going to keep peppering this and uh, fingers crossed for another one. All right, that's a little lure there. Little 100 mil Benny Durkin timber. Got a number four BKK fangs on there with a number four BKK ring, so. Looks like all my terminals are pretty good. I've got a little bit of chafe on the leader. I'm going to chop him off and get straight back into him. Let's go. All right, this leader is getting shorter and shorter. I would generally tie, retie, but I don't think this bite window is going to last long, so I'm going to run the gauntlet and tie him onto a nice short leader. It's a really basic loop knot, granny through the lure, back through your granny, full rotation and a half, and back through your granny. Pull him tight. A few people have been asking about that. Really simple, been using it for years, never really lets me down. So let's get another one. That fish really got me excited. <laughs> Haven't got a decent barrel for a little while, so it's always good to get a nice one like that on the boat. That was a really weird bite, eh? It felt like the lure hit a rock, like it was a really subtle, soft. I must have just put that lure right in his mouth because he didn't really attack the lure. It was more of just a, oh yeah, that's in my face. I'll leave it kind of bite. But from what I'm seeing on the sound, he's not the only one there. So I'm just gonna keep going. That fish there, and be you'd have to be mid 80s. I've got a rough measure on the on the deck, so I'll be able to 
tell you exactly what he is, but uh, I'm gonna get back to a measuring device. But once I get up to that size, they've definitely, or 90% chance they've already ch turned to female. So there's a really good chance that uh, that fish is gonna breed this season coming. So personally for Barra, I don't really like to keep anything over sort of 70 centimeters just because I like to look after the breeders and the big ones sort of get a little bit of a fat, a little fat line through their um, through their meat. So they still taste all right, but not as good as the little sort of 60, 65, 70 models. So generally anything over 80 in this boat gets released. So pretty stoked with that, to be honest. And uh, fingers crossed we can get it done again. I might even drop us back a little bit. It's gonna be hard to explain but I'm sitting right on the edge of a current line here. So I'm fishing out pretty much where I just cast. There's a sandbank and there's just one little shallow channel coming through here. And I think that's what the fish is sitting on. Yeah, we've got about six barra still sitting there in that hole, that school that he was sitting in. So I'm sitting in the main current here. I feel like I sort of should be tucked in there's another one. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> Got me excited then. A little bluey. It's going to be green as. I don't really want to play games with this one because he'll put them hooks in me. So, oh, he's already bleeding everywhere. He can go in the net. Probably got another 15, 20 minutes here before I'll make a move. idea is that being so cold these fish are going to be looking for nice shallow mud flats if you've ever laid down in the mud you know how warm it gets <laughs> done a lot of it when i was a kid so <laughs> i know that it's going to be nice and warm up in the shallows and there should be a decent amount of fish moving up and staying up in the shallows the water should be about an extra degree or two warmer so i'm going to try and find that sort of 19 20 degree water as we sort of as this tide comes in more but just for the time being the flats aren't, ex uh, aren't covered up yet so we're just gonna fish this little corner and then make our way up there back to what i was just saying before we've got a couple of boils out here that are, i've been watching that water and it hasn't been like that for the last 15 minutes so it might just be a change in the tide but it could also be some fish sitting there so I'll put a couple of casts over that sort of area and see what happens We got 19 degree water now coming in, so it is warming up a little bit. Oh, <laughs> come back, baby, come back. Another really finicky little bite, that one. down that way a little bit more. Okay. That's where they are then. There must be a bit of a school sitting there. Well, I've seen that little boil before. Really weird bites. Ah, 
hardest thing with this timber lure is just getting the distance that I need to get it down to hit the fish at the depth they're sitting. Come on. Pretty much driven along that whole bank for about the last probably three, four hundred meters, and I haven't scanned anything significant. There's been a few little patches of what I'd suspect to be grunner and salmon, but uh, not really what we're here for. So I'll just keep going a little bit further and uh, see what we can find. If I don't find anything here, I'm going to burn up and go and see if I can find a thready. Nice snake drains, that's a really good image there. And this is one of the things that I was really concerned about switching from the old hummingbird that I had, was uh, how good they read in shallow water. But you can see there, that's 21 meters each side, and I'm only in just under a meter or a meter now. And uh, we're reading quite clear out there. I can bump the brightness up a little bit, which will give me a little bit better um, picture, as you can see there. But uh, no, definitely, if you're thinking about making the change and you haven't, you know, you're sort of worried about losing what the birds are good for in the shallows, you can see right there, that's a GT56 transducer. I've got me, um, oh, here's my settings here. So you can see 62 contrast, 97 brightness. It's on 1070. And then uh, we've got scroll, scroll speed five, noise reject is interference low tvg high and yeah i'm running that with the uh amber color scheme so not really going to miss out on much there as you can see it's pretty bloody nice image and i'm um, very impressed with this so that's just for everyone who keeps asking me all the time and says that they're thinking about making the change i don't get it i'm not affiliated with Garmin in any way, I'm not sponsored, I pay for all my gear, I pay full price from the shop and uh, yeah, that's just an honest review, so yeah, if you're on the fence, that's, that's it there. All right, that's me, I'm calling it. Been all the way up the top of the creek here and uh, trying to find some threadies in that. I have had a couple of casts and only really caught a couple of blues, so not really ideal, but uh, that barrow this morning is pretty awesome. I'm definitely gonna come back and start putting a bit more time in um, before we get this rain. We're supposed to cop a lot of rain at the end of the week, so yeah, throughout the week, I'll put a couple more sessions in on that and hopefully get a few more and uh, learn some more, but that's what it's all about. Anyway, that's us. Thanks for watching. While you're here, if you haven't done it, hit that subscribe button. Peace.